I almost knocked over the mic. Um, okay, so has anyone come up with any really embarrassing questions while I look for my next poem? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of underwear are you wearing? Oh gosh, she just asked me that. <laughs> well, she asked me if I was wearing underwear. Okay, they're black and white checkered underwear. They're like they're like checkered bands, and I think they're fucking awesome. And they're kind of shaped like boy underwear, and I really like that. So yeah, see what I mean? Too much information. <laughs> Yeah, that's right, you can throw a lot of it. Um, so anyways, that's what this next poem is about. It's called The Femme Card, and I haven't memorized it yet. It's so old. When I was four, I'd purposely get lost in department stores, so the mall security would have to announce my name over the PA, and my mom would come and get me. Once, instead of Kim Shaughnessy, they announced, Attention Kmart Shoppers. With Joy Shaughnessy, please come to customer service. Jim is waiting for you. I was absolutely mortified. I was scarred for life. I was embarrassed beyond belief. I didn't even look like a boy. I looked like Shirley Temple. No, okay, Shirley Temple looked like me. There was no slugs, snails, puppy dog tails, baseball cards, little army guys, or ninja turtles. Just Barbies with crew cuts. I had to prove my girly girl side to the world, so this would never, ever happen again. This is the story I would tell to people to prove my born dedication to femininity and how far removed I am from the masculine end of the spectrum. I didn't want to be caught dead there until I remembered the accurate version of this story a couple months ago. So, I'm in Kmart. I'm bushwhacking through discount clothes racks with mo jogging pants and polyester slacks. I'm crawling under bargain bins of granny panties, hiding behind shelves of pantyhose and plastic eggshells, and running towards the customer service counter like I'm being chased by the gender police. Usually I just take off in stores because I'm insecure, and nothing makes an adopted kid happier than seeing their parents worry when they disappear. It makes us feel wanted. But this time, I was on a mission to fuck with Kmart's perception of gender. As always, I found a lady, I tugged on her smock, I told her I was frightened and lost, and she dried my fake tears and told me everything was going to be okay if I could just give her my name. Without hesitation or fear or known purpose, I told her, my name was Jim. When I was three, I learned that gender is not something for me to play with. She must have based her assumptions on whether someone's mother did or did not dress them in frilly socks with satin rosebuds on them and patent leather tap shoes. <laughs> Apparently, she remembered me and my real name from last week when I did the exact same thing. <laughs> my mom came to get me, so I knew she loved me, but my, but my gender remained a joke, something that hurt if I touched it and would clean up nicely if I dressed it in pink. Pretty soon, I gave up. I decided to stop embarrassing myself. Decided to stop trying to convince my kindergarten teacher to call me Kim. Decided that my super impressive bar jokes were never going to be considered ladylike in a sleepover. I played the girl card I was being dealt, and I did it well. I learned how to counterattack masculine tendencies with hyperfemininity. I'd rather be good at something I hate than fail at something that feels right. Until the other day, I was on the sky train, and I heard one guy say to the other guy, Dude, is that a guy or a girl? I searched the train immediately, thinking there must have been some hot ass on board. <laughs> I looked up and saw them sizing up my modest yet flattened chest. He's like, uh, I don't know. Finally, someone was mildly confused. So I leaned over and I told them my most impressive bar joke. <laughs> myself think she's not just a friend. Friends help you move and talk you into drunk karaoke. While she does this, it's more like us moving in together after the third date and her serenading me with something by Tegan and Sarah. 
In this, Heather has two mommies, life and times of broken, chosen, malfunctioning families. I have been blessed with three sets of parents to go to. And as of this poem, it's two down, one to continue disillusioning. In this situation, it's a given to hope for the best and expect the worst. And it usually lies bittersweetly in between, like, yes, dear, we know. We've known since you turned your Barbie magic voyageur into a getaway van for your Ninja Turtle. <laughs> we understand it. We just want you to be happy. And then come the questions, are you sure? But how do you know? Forcing me to mentally review every Kim and Kylie best friends forever heartache that I've ever had. I'm reevaluating my motives behind looking at every grade 10 slumber party as being a potential orgy. Recalling how even at five I had the neighborhood tomboys lined up around the block to a playhouse. <laughs> it's the fact that I can't remember a single game of truth or dare where I didn't run out screaming, I'm not in love with her or anything, I just really, really, really admire her and want to be around her like all the time. <laughs> it's what tells me this is not a phase. This is not going to change. I really am that way. I have caught the gay. But don't think that my condition is for lack of trying. Because I've tried very hard and I'm still trying to forget. But I eventually came to terms with the fact that panic and excitement not quite the same thing. The last time I had to pour out my big gay heart, it was to a biological mom who I called by her first name because we're actually more like strangers who just happen to look, talk, act, and think alike. What I said was, I kind of, maybe, sort of, so much, don't really at all um, like boys, <laughs> at least the kind you want me to. You should have seen the way prejudice was sneaking up on me to sever that umbilical cord a second time. Her discomfort, disbelief, disgust, it hit me like two ton bricks, and I guess I should have known by the way she cringes at the length of my hair and avoids eye contact when I wear a tie. I faked graciousness when she said she could still try to love me. I promised to never kiss, touch, grope another girl in front of her. I promised not to tell the other family members for what she says is my own dignity. But I'm going to pretend she didn't flinch when I hugged her goodbye. I'm going to pretend the first thing she said was, I love you. I'm going to pretend she did everything I expect her to do. I'm going to pretend she never said, my queerness was God's way of punishing her. Because I am much more than her bad karma. I am much more than the fear instilling stereotype her eyes just reduced me to. I am much more than your typical anything. I am the ultimate catch of a lesbian life partner lifetime. I'm not a punishment, I'm a challenge. I'm the gift of pain, I am changed. I'm here to help you grow as a person and overcome what living in Alberta has done to you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, provide counseling session in exchange for acceptance. Yeah. Because in this one dad, two dad, orange dad, blue dad day and age, what would life be if we didn't have someone else's love and respect to fight for? Thank you. 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 Thank you.